gentleman, Michael Lombardi. Hey. Lombo. How are we doing? Lombo, How are we doing, guys? Lombo, we were just uh, chit-chatting about football done right, you know, and uh, basically who we were talking about was Bill Belichick. And as soon as, yeah. we, as soon as we heard him go on a two-and-a-half-minute rant about T.J. Watt and then later go on another two-and-a-half-minute rant whenever he was asked about again at the end, it's like throughout history here of Bill Belichick, whenever he does that, that normally means, hey, pal, I got a lot of respect for you, but also – yeah, your life's going to suck against us. Is that just kind of yeah. a stat, uh, status quo up there for Bill Belichick, you think, Lombo? Yeah, no question. I mean, if you're going to beat the Steelers and they got to beat somebody, you got to take T.J. Watt out of the game. I think one thing you look for tonight, when T.J. Watt's not in the game, they will try to throw the ball down the field. You know, when you played against us with Freeney, whenever Freeney wasn't in the game, that's when you took your shots because you knew Freeney was on the sideline, and that's when you went no huddle to keep him over there. So if you if you're gonna play against a great rusher, you gotta chip them, you gotta do everything you can, you gotta make them tired, all those things. But these guys are in great shape. You can't make them tired. I mean, Max Crosby looks like he never gets tired. So when they're not in the game or if they're somewhere, you gotta figure out a plan for them. I mean, look, every game is about for Belichick, it's about point of emphasis. Like what do we have to do to win the game? What do we have to avoid to lose? Now they haven't done a very good job of that this year, but defensively they played pretty well. I mean the last four weeks, the five weeks that they've given up, I think, 76 points, they just can't score anything. Yeah, they stink offensively, there, which makes them tough to watch. But here we are, mm -hmm. Thursday night, playing against another team that has similar uh, kind of optical problems. Yep. Now, the, yeah. Dwight Freeney mentioned, I appreciate you bringing him up. He's running the College Football Hall of Fame this weekend. Let's go, Dwight. 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 Congrats, Dwight. Dwight. He needs to go into the NFL Hall of Fame mm -hmm. as well. Hey, Mike Chappell, yes. let's uh, – Figure out how to be. I'll help better. Mike Chapel on that. I'll help Mike Chapel. See, Freeney's a guy okay. that qualifies for the Hall of Fame. Here's why. Because on Tuesday, ask Chuck. All you talk about, all the offensive coaches talk about is how are we going to block Freeney? How are we going to block Freeney? When you got a Tuesday player, right? A Tuesday player, meaning you're in a game plan and you got a plan for that guy specifically. And it's every single week that guy qualifies for a Hall of Fame. And if he has longevity, he's getting in the Hall of Fame. You guys mentioned before I came on, Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill's a Tuesday player. Like, you spend all day Tuesday trying to figure out how the hell are we going to take him out of the game. In the four games he hasn't had 100 yards so far this year, they're one and three. Right? The only game that he didn't have 100 yards in was the opener against the second game against New England, and they won that game. So you plan for Hill. Now, I agree with you. I'm not sure what Washington was doing in their game plan meetings. I don't know if they knew what jersey number he had. Maybe they thought he was on the Chiefs. I don't know. But that's what you do. And those guys go in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I agree. And Freeney, I think, on our show told us, like, the chip was basically created by New England yeah. to ruin my life. Like, that's kind of <laughs> how the whole thing – is that accurate? Do you – do do you? I, 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 I'm pretty sure the chip – well, you know, remember – Great pass rushers create different blocking schemes, right? No, when Lawrence Taylor played, running backs blocked linebackers because that's what he was. It was back on back, back on backer. And so they had Bill Walsh develop the molly block, which was pull the guard out to block him. And then that tried to help slow down Lawrence Taylor, which nothing could do. But the chip and all that came in because you got to get five into a route but you also want to protect the quarterback. And so that's where the chip came into play in the NFL. So if you're getting prepared for on Tuesdays and they're changing blocking strategies for you, you deserve going to Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Hey, Freeney, like go, go to Hall of Fame, Freeney. Okay, Dwight. Hey, who, I, I, I vote for him. He belongs. Mike Chappell's got to get on it. I mean, the, the, uh, it's like he's got a long Charles jam, Haley Chapp, wait, this guy. Char, Charles Haley waiting for like three times to get in the Hall of Fame. I mean, Charles Haley was disruptive. You, you just basically – you, you had a block. It was hard to block him. Those guys, they, as Al Davis would say, they tilt the field. I like a good impersonation. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I absolutely love that. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Lombo, biggest game of the weekend was the Niners and the Eagles. And in the first quarter, it looked like, oh, okay, Philly kind of knows what they're doing here. They're getting four-man pressure. Maybe they do shut down the Niners. And then after that, it was just a 49ers shit show all over the Eagles. Should we be worried about them? And how big is it that they're getting Shaq Leonard in the building to help with that linebacking core, do you think? Well, they need somebody in the building. You know, the first nine games of the season, they gave up about 68 yards rushing defensively. The last three games, they've given up 162 yards rushing. 
So their defensive front, their linebackers haven't played well. But the one thing about great coaches, and Chuck can verify this, whenever you watch the tape of the game, you get you get a sense of what that coach thought of that team. And Kyle Shanahan, really, when you study that tape, he was very eager to throw the ball. He was not formationing to run. He was formationing to throw. He wanted to attack the Eagles. He knew he had an advantage that the Eagles couldn't tackle. The Eagles are one of the poorest tackling teams in the secondary in football. He went after them, and he repeated plays and basically said to the Eagles, see if you could stop it. Go ahead. Try. You're not going to. And he was very aggressive with his passing game play calls, with his passing game play calls, because he felt like he had a huge advantage in that game, and he did. And for me, it also told me that he really trusts Purdy. And once he got control of the front, remember, the Eagles had 70 sacks last year. 60 came from the defensive line. They only have 32 sacks this year. 29 have come from the defensive line. So if they can't get there with four, they're going to get exploited, and that's what's happened. They don't tackle well. They can't really cover well enough. And if their front doesn't dominate the game, they take over. And I thought Kyle showed everybody that. Is that fixable, Lomba? Like, are we going to look back on this loss to the Niners three weeks from now and be like, hey, remember the Eagles got their asses beat against the Niners, and then that's when it changed? Or are we worried for them going forward? Well, you're worried about whenever they play a good front. Like Dallas, they got pressure on Dak. If you go back and watch that tape, Dallas, uh, Dak was under pressure. Steele struggled to block Riddick. And so it's always about the matchups. Can they block the four-man pressure? That's what they need to do. Dallas in the last two games against Philadelphia has moved for over 400 yards. Now, McCarthy was very aggressive in his play calling in the first game against Philadelphia. He went for it on fourth down, which typically Mike's more conservative. But I think Mike really feels like his skill players are better than the Eagles coverage players. Okay. The key to them winning, the key to them winning is going to be can they protect Dak? Dak was under a lot of pressure. Remember, he scrambled quite a bit in that game. And when they had the ball first and go first and five at the six, Steele broke down and Riddick got the sack. That really pushed him out. That's what cost him the game. So I think when you watch it this week, if they control the front, they'll put yards on, they'll put points on. The other thing is Dallas gives up yards too, right? So Philly's going to move the ball well. Last time they played down there, Gardner Minshew put like 30 point, 31 on them, I think. Feels like you like the Eagles here, huh? I think the line is interesting. It's three and a half. It's telling you something, right? There's a lot of money that came in early in the week on the Cowboys, and it seems like everybody that they're keeping it at three and a half. They're giving you the hook, which is tempting, right? You want to take it. And that's what worries you a little bit. To me, the books aren't stupid. When they put that out there, there's a reason. Dallas is really playing at home if their front can get there. Remember, the Eagles haven't been able to run the ball as effectively as they did last year. I mean, they averaged 4.6 yards a carry last year. They're down to 4.1 this year. They, and the other thing what happens to them is, Pat, they don't, get, they don't get in front of the game. They don't play from in front like they did last year. Last year, they scored 206 points in the second quarter. This year, they're deficit of 50 points in the second quarter. Mm. Hmm. So it sounds like you are a little worried about the Eagles. Let's yeah. talk about another team, baby. Go ahead, Ty. Yeah, look, look they, they have a will of a champion, right? I mean, they are a tough – the quarterback's good. I don't uh, – you know, like they're not going to bench the quarterback. The quarterback's really good. They they have this fight to them. But the problem is a space game becomes problem. You know, I mean, they're going to have trouble covering. They have trouble covering. And – I think Cowboys really have a good idea on how to attack them. And they're going to have to beat the Niners at some point if they want to go to where they want to go to. The NFC is top heavy. Now let's go to the other side. Go ahead, Ty. Yeah, Lombo, the other marquee game on Sunday, uh, Chiefs-Packers. Are we in the territory now where we should have some cause for concern with the Chiefs? Like It seems like in years past it's kind of always – hey, it doesn't matter they have Patrick Mahomes. When push comes to shove, they're going to put themselves in a position to win the game, and most of the time they do. But Sunday night, you know, their defense has been so good all year, and the Packers kind of just had their way with them and made them look pretty pedestrian, you know, especially early on those first two drives. Can can they turn things around with kind of how wide open the AFC is right now? And then on the flip side, the Packers, I mean, obviously the NFC is very top-heavy, but – with the rest of the NFC playoff picture kind of in flux, like, do you think they're in a position with how they've played over the last few weeks that they could, you know, really kind of make a little run here as we uh, approach the playoffs? You know, I, I think the Packers, their offensive line, their pass protection was so good. I think that's what got them ahead of the Chiefs and loves really improved his accuracy. And these skill players, Reed, 
Dobbs, Watson have been really good. They're coming on. Musgrave was a good player until they had to put him on IR, the tight end. So I, I think this offense is starting to click and get their identity, and I think they're going to be a problem. I mean, they're playing Tommy DeVito this week back in New York on Monday night. They should win that game. I know Saquon Barkley can run the ball effectively, but De- DeVito has been sacked 20% of the times he's taken sacks this year. 20%. That's a lot. So they're going to be able to get ahead of the down and distance if they play them. For me, when I watch the Chiefs, they're 0-4 this year when their opponent scores more than 20 points, Mm. straight up and against the spread. So, Mm. you know, what you worry about them is they're not the same Chief offense. We keep thinking it's going to turn around, but it's not. And a lot of it is because so much is placed on Kelsey. Whether he's 100% or not, I don't know. But he's down a full yard in yards per catch this year than he was last year. Right, His target percentage is up, meaning he's getting more looks, hmm. but he's not getting as many big plays as he once did. And a lot of that is reflective, A, he's 34 years old, and B, the other players around him haven't been able to help him. I think this is the one year we see the really the effect on Kelsey by not having Hill. Yeah, and the AFC, a lot of parity, too. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. It is a bananas conference. Chuck, go ahead, pal. Yeah, it seems like there's a bunch of six and six teams, seven and five, eight and threes. You know, we know Baltimore is going to get back on on the field this week. New after, England's after still a in bye. it, Chuck. New England's still wow. in it. Mathematically, I think they're still <laughs> no, in it. They no, ask Con, ask Con, man, We're if not. he feels good about that. But Lombo, who's your. They don't want to be in it. They got to get a quarterback. They Amen. don't want to be in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. a good there thing. You go. That's Amen. how Connor feels, too. Yeah. Thank you, Lombo. More cash on Pitt tonight, then. Hey, so Lombo, who's your dark horse? You know, we just talked about, you know, Buffalo at 6-6 six and six going into uh, Kansas City on, on Sunday. Do you have a dark horse, somebody that somebody should be really scared about making a, making a run and making the playoffs? I, I mean, I think Shane Steichen's done a great job. In Hell Indiana. yeah! He's seven and 7-5. I Hell mean, they blocked yeah. two punts last week. They blocked two oh, punts. Nice. Their return game really helped them. Yeah. Their defense has really kind of let them down. They haven't been able to stop the run. I think their, their schedule is very favorable for them when you look at it. Cleveland has a favorable schedule, but Cleveland's kind of like a two-faced team. They play really good defense at home. They don't play well on the road. Twenty-nine. To points me, I don't think you can rule out. What? I don't think you can rule out Buffalo. They give up I, I twenty-nine points a who, game who, right who? on the road. Cleveland. Cleveland, right? Cleveland gives up thirty yeah. a game on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're horrible on the road. Jeez. They're horrible on the road. I mean, the Rams went up and down the field on them, and, and I was on Cleveland in the game, and I mm. thought everybody says, well, how could you be on Joe Flacco? That's the dumbest pick of all. Joe it. Flacco probably played the best quarterback <laughs> yeah. that the Browns have seen in two years. Bingo. I mean, seriously. I mean, he was better than You're Watson spinning. has been. I mean, he was throwing it good. The problem was the Browns' defense couldn't get off the field. They couldn't put any pressure on Stafford at all last week, and he threw darts. But, my, I mean, I don't think you can rule out Buffalo. Look, Buffalo's healthy. Buffalo's healthy this week. They're going to go into the game. Josh Allen's going to take the team and put it on his back. And he's tough to deal with. He's hard to tackle. He'll throw the ball all over the place. And here's where we are with Buffalo. There's no more, Josh, you play point guard and let everybody else shift. It's now, Josh, you're the scoring point guard. You're going to have to help everybody. And I think they're a dangerous team when they get in that mode. Okay. Conman has a question for you, Lombo. Yeah, Lombo. I just, you know, quick question about tonight. Are you mentally prepared for the fact that Al Michaels probably won't have a tie on? And is this as angry as you've yeah. ever been at Bill Belichick for having a bad team? <laughs> Look at me. I'm in a sweater. If I'm in a sweater and I'm in Jersey and he's in Pittsburgh, he's, you know, Al's going to make sure that he's got Toscano's takeout and he's got a sweater on tonight. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Look, I'm disappointed in, this, in the Patriots and their inability to, to do Belichickian-type things in terms of fix the problems, which they haven't been able to do. I mean, you can look after they lost to Miami. I mean, they've been in every single game. Oh, yeah. But they've made mistakes like you can't believe. I mean, the interception, the fumble, they can't score. All that conversation we spent last year about Matt Patricia's not a good offensive coach, we, we could have never anticipated it was going to get worse. And it has. It has in every area. So, yeah, I am disappointed. And I think I think it'll get better once they get through it and they find a quarterback and they can move forward because and, right now they're a team playing without a quarterback. And when they move forward, Bill's the coach? Well, you're going to see him this week. You can ask him. He'll be right there on the set with you. You can, you can talk about Army, Navy, the history of the game, and I'm Man. sure he'll give you a very, very revealing answer. But we know there's people in America that already have the answer. We've already heard that. We've heard it on your show before. Oh. So I'm sure people know. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. You said a lot of things there. Um, 
<laughs> I did say a lot you of things lot without of things saying there. anything. Yeah, bingo. Without saying anything. That's classic Bill Belichick. Is he gonna he's uh he's gonna be he's gonna be at game day? He's gonna be at the Army Navy this weekend? Well, I mean it's in Foxborough. I assume he's gonna be there for you. You're gonna see him. You know, it, this is an he's important game for him. It's an important game for, you know, his family. I mean, Bill played – one of the things about the Patriot Way, and I know it hasn't been successful this year, but I, the Patriot Way started at the Naval Academy, and I wrote about this in my book. Uh, much like Bill Gates would not have become Bill Gates had he not grown up on the campus of the University of Washington and had an ability to get to computer labs. Wow. Belichick might not have been who he is if he didn't play catch every day with Roger Stahlbeck as a young kid, and his dad was a coach at the Naval Academy. That part of it is part of the Patriot way. The What's that book? What's that the, book? It, uh, the Wicker Shane book? I'm right. No, no. The, yeah. the book about all the people like, um, you know. Oh, it, that's called Outliers. Outliers. I think it's Outliers. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah, I think it's called yeah. Outliers. Yeah, that yeah, was Malcolm in the Gladwell. Aaron Rodgers book club. Yeah. About how, yeah. like, hey, some people who will go on to be the greatest of mm -hmm. all time at something, well, they might have had a little bit of assistance, like being within the proximity of the only computer. Uh, yeah. that, it, that was in the uh, United States of America. Yeah. Bill Gates was within walking distance. Mm -hmm. of, I, I think that was in that story and everything like that. Exactly yep. The right. thought yep. of Bill go, being and growing up in the Navy, not only did he learn discipline, accountability, right. mm -hmm. everything that the U.S. military yep. and the Naval Academy preaches and teaches, but also football, just mm -hmm. the basics of yeah. like yeah. that. That's fundamental football through and through. What a weapon, dude. I can't wait to see him. This will be a first time talking to him as opposed to him talking to Vinatieri. Yep. Love you. You're the greatest. <laughs> and then, hey, coach, good to see you. And then he's just on his way out. You, know? you mentioned Vinatieri. I, I think it's interesting on the day where Robbie Gould retired. I think it's an interesting story. If you were, When you see Bill, you'll ask him, who, what player that he had a cut that was probably what he felt like was his biggest mistake? He'll tell you Robbie Gould. And because he had Vinatieri, he couldn't keep Gould. Vinatieri was on the team at the time, and you could ask Adam. But they knew Gould was a good kicker. They just had Vinatieri, unfortunately, and they couldn't keep Gould. There wasn't the rules where you could put a guy on practice squad at the time. So it's kind of interesting how Gould is going to retire now, and you mentioned Vinatieri. That's one of the things that still that still bothers him to this day, that he didn't be able to enjoy the fruits of Gould, but he had Vinatieri. All right, so a couple so. things there. You said a lot without, you know, there. I know I, I have an Italian horn necklace on. Okay. Yep, that's right. Okay. Uh, 0.01% Italian. Our buddy Frankie also under the weather. We're pulling for you. Yep. We're pulling for you, Meraldo. You're more Italian than me. Have I been pronouncing Vinatieri's <laughs> name wrong this entire time? He's, he's I, I always say Vinatieri. I'm Vinatieri. I give it a little bit of more. Yeah. Oh, more pizzazz. How about six do. years in that you do not team want meeting? I'm screwing that up for six years. You don't want to go by how I pronounce names. <laughs> you don't yeah. want to go by well, Gold, dude. Go by I call him Gold. Jan loves you. But I do, you know, Robbie coming out of Penn State, he didn't have, like, the best year his senior year, I don't think. If my memory serves me accurate, because Robbie has a little brother, same class as me. Chris, I think his name is. He's special teams coach now in the NFL, and he ended up going to Virginia, I think, to kick. So I met them all at the Penn State kicking camp, uh, the one that I won. I won the camp, obviously. <laughs> and then McQuarrie told me I was in Penn State material. Look that up, oh. yeah. who that is. Thank God I'm not. But nonetheless, I was supposed to go to Penn State, and I got to meet Rob. Robbie was very kind to me, like very, very nice to me. I didn't know much about kicking. I was a soccer player that just was bombing ball, like actually murdering footballs. Robbie was very nice to me. His family was very nice to me. But he didn't have, like, the best senior year. So whenever he went up to New England, the story goes that him and Vinatieri uh, really worked together. Like, they actually got along very well. And, like, Vinny, like, I don't want to say gave him a lot of game, but I think Robbie thanks Vinny for a lot of mm -hmm. stuff from that training camp and that whole process. And then Robbie obviously goes on to have this historic Hall of Fame career pretty much. And, uh, yeah, that he retired. Congrats on a hell of a run, Robbie. Yeah. Boy, Robbo. Thank you for being nice to me, Robbie, too, whenever I was just a young buck. Gold. Gold. Robbie Gould. <laughs> Not a bad player. Uh, but I can't wait to meet Bill. Mm -hmm. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah let's go. That, that's amazing if I get to do that. Nice handshake. I'm just maybe pop the top yeah. off. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Remember? Remember you? <laughs> yeah. You did it. I seen you. I mm -hmm. seen you in that whole camera. Uh, Tone has a question for you, Lombo. Yeah, Lombo. It's a, it's a shame tonight, really, because for 20 years, this would have been the best matchup of the of the week easily, probably of the season. Um, and that's probably because 7 and 12 were on the field 
and and now they're not. Um, is it? Can we safely say that um, the Patriots and Steelers have missed on their first round quarterbacks? And how far does that set you back? What do you think is going to happen tonight, well, too? Uh, I I don't know. You know, look, I I don't think the Steelers think they missed on Pickett. I think they're still involved in it. I think they're going to keep going down this road. I, I think a lot of America thinks they have. I'm not sure the Steelers internally have. I think New England has come to the realization mm-hmm. after three seasons. Rarely do you ever see a quarterback play as well as a, as he did as a rookie and then yep. not play well now. I mean that that trajectory never happens. In, in football, yet it has. But there were moments as a rookie that Mac made a lot of mistakes. In Indianapolis, as an example, you know, mm-hmm. two bad interceptions in the middle eight in that game, ultimately coming off a seven game win streak, cost them. And those mistakes, although as a rookie looked like you could overcome them, have creeped up in his third season. So they haven't gone away. And I think it's fairly obvious that they can't get the ball down the field. You could say they don't have skilled players, all that. But they, they, you have to conclude beyond a reasonable doubt that they need a quarterback. I'm not sure Pittsburgh's at that same point, depending on where they are. To me, I, I thought Pittsburgh, if they had Kirk Cousins on this team, if they had a Kirk Cousins on this team where Pickett could still develop if he had that ability, then, you know, you got a chance to move forward really quickly. I love Ben. Love him. Oh, yeah. Hard not to. Way to go, Ben. Love the you. best. Ben. And football. Love football and with Ben Roethlisberger. But his last couple of years, I mean, we were not really playing football, you know. We were throwing the ball as soon as, boom, bang, yeah. pow. Right there. Well, if okay. you had, remember the year the Duck, love Duck, Duck. Quack, 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 love quack. Duck. Sure. I love the Ducks there. Yeah, we, we went to, we traveled to Pittsburgh yeah. to watch the Duck show yeah. live. He landed on his feet. We, yeah. Yes, he certainly has. Yeah. And we are incredibly proud of Duck. But if you think about Kirk Cousins or one of those types of quarterbacks, and whenever we say those types of quarterbacks, we don't mean this as a shot. We're just talking about somebody that just like actually is in here just to be a point guard, manage the game. Let's just move. Like, we don't need to turn the ball over. Let's just kind of move. With those Steelers defenses, with how great they have been, I feel like. That's why Pittsburgh fans are po- finally at the point where they're like, we're sick of this. That's why Matt Canada, first time getting fired since what? In the middle of the season, 19 what? Was the first, last time they fired uh, it coach was or four, coordinator? It was 40 something. It, it was the owner who fired himself as the coach. Yeah. Smart guy. It's crazy. These are two stories. You know franchises. what's amazing about TJ Watt, though, with, oh, when yeah. you say that, is the fact that Watt's able to get this many sacks and this much pressure for a team that never plays from in front. Right. I mean, that's Mm. really remarkable when you think about it, because ultimately what you want to do is is what Kyle's trying to do in San Francisco. Kyle's in a mad dash to get the lead. He wants to throw it fast, get ahead and then let those guys that he has the strength of his team excel. It's what Philly did last year. It's it's really the West Coast offense. That's what the West Coast offense is. It's not smash seven curl. It's not 20 bingo cross. It's we're going to throw the ball to get the lead. And we're going to have our defensive line rush the passer to create turnovers. That's the essence of what the man was trying to accomplish in San Francisco. And he did. And I think what Pittsburgh's not been able to do is play from in front. And Watt still is tremendous. Highsmith is still tremendous. They're still able to get pressure on the passer. And they're in these tight, close games, which I think is a great tribute to them. I don't want to go, to echo your point, I don't want to go back to Dwight Freeney uh, and just keep doing this and banging this drum. But that's how Bill Polian built the Colts. That's literally how he yep. built the Colts. Like, offense, we're going to spend money, a lot of it. Quarterback, weapon, tight end, what? running back, we're yeah. going to have a couple great ones. We're going to do this entire thing. We're going to get the lead, and then we got Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis, and they're just going to meet at the quarterback, and that's how this whole thing is going to go. And that was what led to the most successful decade in NFL history for the Indianapolis well, Colts. Well, think about the do- – he played in the Dome, oh, RCA yeah. Dome here. All those sacks came at home, right, Lombo? I mean – Oh, crowd no, noise. That's right. Oh, well. No, that, yeah, that that was the real that, crowd noise. Yeah. Well, well, that was a Hoosier screaming. Yeah. yeah, through the speakers, maybe. Well, I mean, but that oh, was the whole. Speaking? That was the whole when deal. God. When you have a dome team that that can play, can rush the passer, and one of the things that I've always thought, if you were building a dome team, if you were a size speed dome team, it really enhanced yourself. I mean, think of the great Viking teams when they moved from the Metro Metro Park and the Metropolitan Stadium into the John Metro Randall. Dome, right? Yeah. They they had great Randall, uh, you know, Chris Dolman. I mean, they could really get after it, and that snap count. Now, back then, we were not as good with the silent count as we are today. So it has helped a little bit, but that snap count is the advantage that the offense has. 
And when you neutralize that advantage, when you can do that by the crowd noise, you should not be able to run the ball on any good dome team because the defense should gain the line of scrimmage immediately. Hey, did you um, did you hear Tone Diggs yesterday on our program? I know you were hosting your show, so you might have missed it. Um, he actually kind of said that maybe – Akersher wouldn't be sold out tonight. That is yeah, what he, he said. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. He, like, said that. I can't believe that. Confidently. Oh, I, I, we were mind blown yes. by it, Lombo. Yeah. But that's that's what he was saying. That's where we're at right now with the Pittsburgh Steelers organization. Now, I, I, it's filled they're up. They're in the rut. They're in the hunt. They're in the playoff. They can still get there. But, I mean, I know it doesn't look pretty, but, you know, we don't grade these things on the beauty contest. I mean, they're – they Lama. they're still a hard team to play. I mean, they're they're good. For, the front's good. Michael. Look, last week was disappointing. I was on them. I thought they would beat the Steelers. I agree Arizona, with what Bill yeah. Cower said. Fourth fourth and one fourth and inches from the goal line, and the shotgun. Pittsburgh Steelers are in shotgun. I mean, come on. It's genius, uh, Lombo. You know, I mean, you were with the Patriots for a long time. Steelers fans for a long time. It's not about making the playoffs and losing in the first round of the playoffs. Like that's that's not what we're here for. And you know that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know that. And also, I know the last time I worked in Cleveland in 89 was the last time the Browns finished ahead of them. Mm -hmm. That's how good they are in terms of being able to maintain their Oh, maybe they're a little spoiled is what Lombo just said. That's what Lombo just said. Maybe. (laughs) sounded like Maybe a little spoiled. That's like the year we went uh, 2-14 and whenever we found out that Peyton's neck was going to be broken, uh, literally in training camp, and he wasn't going to be able to play. There was Colts. They showed up showing up with bags over their head. That's right. It was like, tell you – you're real rich, yeah. real rich. One year, things don't go and then right. They get, and then they get Andrew Luck. I mean, think about that. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah, I, mean, New England, I love they football have to fans. Suffer yeah. through it. I love football fans. They're the best. And Akersher will be packed out tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Pittsburgh will show up for football. That just primetime NFL football. They will show up. Tony, what's the head? Tony. Tony's talking to people with season tickets, I think. Yes. That is, 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 they is that heard some things. Oh no! If there's yellows, if that looks like a pit University of Pittsburgh football game, the New England Patriots who won six Super Bowls in the last twenty years, and they went to eleven. They had twenty five thousand people at the stadium last week. Yeah, it wasn't prime time. It wasn't prime time. Right, twenty five thousand is generous. This is prime time. This is like a city showcase almost. That's what that's what happens. (laughs) There was nobody at that point. 2,500, no, no, no. I think, no, is what I'm you meant. I'm just worried they're going to treat this like the old school Thursday night football on, on, on NFL when uh, it was, you know, like color rush, Jags, Titans. Okay, well, the issue here is, and now that we're thinking and talking about it, it's like Patriots fans aren't traveling to Pittsburgh to watch this game. No. no. So, like, normally the assist you could potentially get from the other team, like the Patriots fans aren't even showing up at home. No. And they've paid thousands and thousands of dollars for season tickets. Right. Oh, no. Yeah, they're, not, they're not showing up. These are fan bases letting their teams know. This ain't how we play football around here. No. Yeah. And it, it needs to be heard. It needs to be heard loud and clear. But Tony just added another great wrinkle to this game. Let's put the color of Rush uniforms Should on be. the line, too. Why do, when were we the Bumblebee tonight? Yeah. The Steelers wearing the Bumblebee? Listen, we're going to put a Lombardi on the line today. What? The losing coach uh, immediately becomes a defense coordinator for the other team. But oh, we're fired. Okay, forward. that's not and then, bad. Yeah, we'll do color rush. And, yeah. and, and the owners have to take a snap at running back yes. and a snap at middle linebacker. And also oh, Renegade boy. shipping up to Pittsburgh. Boom. Yep. Okay. Uh, Ty has a question for you, Lombo, as we yeah. continue to draw up reasonings on why and how this game tonight could be the Mega Bowl Absolutely. in Week 14. Lombo, uh, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday, and I know on the GM shuffle you got a little hot about it, but at what point do you think people are going to start giving Brock Purdy a little bit of credit? Credit for actually being good at football. It seems like we kind of just create deficiencies for him, even though everyone watches him play on Sunday and he just continues to throw four touchdowns and for over 300 yards. We understand he was Mr. Irrelevant, but he's the odds on favorite to win MVP. But even if he were to win the MVP this year and they win the Super Bowl, people are still going to make excuses and talk about his weapons and how good they are. Like, at what point do you think people will actually start to appreciate? Brock Purdy uh, for how good he is as a quarterback? I think it's hard to make people understand the game of football. They see it their way and they just (laughs) won't change, you know, and so it's hard to get them to see the obvious. And this is really obvious. I mean, look, I'm embarrassed to say I was in a scouting profession and this kid went in the seventh round. How did you recognize it as somebody better? But one of the things you have to do in scouting is admit you made a mistake. And so this kid in that tape last week, Kyle Shanahan has complete faith in him. And I said on my podcast last week when he was 11 to 1, 
to be the uh, MVP that, you know, there are a lot of Joe Montana-like qualities in the player. Now, he's not Joe. I'm not suggesting that. But his rhythm, his accuracy, his athleticism is sneaky good. And he's got great timing, and he throws the ball. And all he does is play point guard. He just distributes the football to the people in the right spot. And they have confidence in him, and he's likable. The team loves him. They love him. You know, one of the things about Pickett, the team loves Pickett, right? If Pickett wasn't the kind of kid he was, I think the Steelers would be easier to move away from him. But he's they love him as a competitor and as a person. Takes but the boys I, I to concerts. Kid, yep. Yeah, I mean, this kid is so good. Like, I don't know why. You know, the two players, I don't understand why they're not in the MVP conversation. It was Purdy and Tyreek Hill. Like, I don't understand how Tyreek Hill – like, people say, well, you got to vote for McCaffrey. No, 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 wait a minute. The best offensive player in the game, the guy who tilts the field more than anybody is Tyreek Hill. Like, you're holding on to anything you have. When he goes to the sideline and you're the deep – ask Chuck. It's a different game call when he yeah, ain't Chuck on the just, field. Chuck, the, re, you, the reason why I just looked that way is Chuck actually went, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. that, that is a – I mean, there. I mean, look, I love McCaffrey. McCaffrey's great. McCaffrey's oh. tremendous. Oh. But he's like – he's an auxiliary uh, – he's like a luxury part to a beautiful car. I mean, he's tremendous, and he fits perfectly in what they do. But this Hill guy now, I mean, he tilts the field. Like, you're scared to death. You're breathing. You can't call cover one. Your safety can't make a mistake. You can't do anything. And then when you have an angle on him, forget about it. What he has is rare. He's got rare speed. Rare. Rare speed. And rare quickness. Rare quickness and rare speed. That rarely goes together. But this kid's like I don't know and why durability. he's not the MVP. Hey, and durability, and toughness, yeah, and toughness, and he's tough, you know. And so, like with their defense, the way they play defense, and the way that they have this weapon, and if they continue to run the ball, look, they're going to be like most people in the Northeast. They don't. They're going to stay in Florida for the winter. They have one more road game this year, and it's in Baltimore. And then they get if they can win four of the next five, they get home field advantage. You got to go play them down there. That ain't easy. Yeah, that yeah. thickness is what mm -hmm. coaches and everybody's actually thinking about going down there in Miami, and also twi uh, Tootsie's. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's the Miami flu that could potentially <laughs> yeah. come second floor out there getting shoulder rubs. You know, I've uh, I've never seen it happen personally, but yeah. I've heard stories of other sure. teams potentially sure. wandering Miami until the wee hours and then not yeah. playing their best right. football the next day as they're sweating more right. than they have for the last two weeks because and a the lot humidity. Of hamstring pulls. Yeah, hamstring pulls happen when you have to get done playing. Wonder how that. It's like happens. a combo. Yeah. It's like the clubs and yeah. nightlife. Yeah. Let's yeah. boom. Yeah. We'll get them a little. Yeah. You know, yeah. we'll spar mm -hmm. with. Them. Tire out. And then the heat and humidity during the game is going to dehydrate you. Boom. It's like a knockout down there. And they haven't had a team, you know, that's really been able to take advantage of it. But, like, Tyreek will run your ass to sleep. Yeah. yeah. Like, he will. Yeah. That's a long day for people. Well, let's not forget it. This is a defensive team. This defense is really good. Great. Jalen Banjo's done a great job. And they're hard Jaylen to play. They make, you, they make you play left-handed. They take away what you want to do. Washington threw for 140 yards on him. Poor Sam Howell got the, got his butt kicked. He was all over. You know, and so Fangio's got, after the Philly game, really, from the Philly game forward, this defense is one of the best defenses in football. They're hard to block. You can't separate from them. And you're, you're not going to be able to score a lot of points on them. And they can score points. If they don't turn it over, they can score points. They're a tough out. Hey, Fangio's one of the things together. They, one of the things you thought you could get an advantage of is if you could get them to come north. But now, since they're going to be resting for the next four out of five weeks in Florida, you ain't getting them north. Pass rush-wise, you're not worried about that defense and losing Jalen Phillips? I know Van Ginkle's a, a good, try-hard guy, but... Whoa. That's well, a, that's that's a good one. Oh, oh, he's a good one. Oh, yeah. That's that. what Chuck just said. He's a good fifth. No, he's, no, he's a... I mean, he, first one in, last one out. Coach's kid, yeah, hard hat. Motor. Motor. He's an amazing Lunch guy. He's a, Van Ginkle's an amazing guy. He's a free agent out there with a bunch of teams, and nobody signed him. Like Van Like, this guy, all he did was make... He plays. He made plays for him last year. Love him. I love yeah. him. But how big of you know loss is Jalen Phillips? That's a, that's a huge loss. I think. Well, they they played a lot of, during the season without him. I think Chubb's starting to play better. You know, look, they're you, you know they're going to miss him. Phillips a really good player. I don't deny that. But I think their scheme is good, and it's hard to run the ball on these guys. And so you become one dimensional against Vic Fangio's defense. It's a hard thing to go, and it's hard to put consistent drives week in and week out against them. And if they get the lead. Like yeah. they're capable Forget of doing. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it is right. Hey, who are your picks for this weekend? What should we be looking at? You think Lombo? How'd you do last you weekend know, too? 
I it was horrible. I was over oh, two last no, week. No, I was just asked. bad. No, uh, well, no, because I, you know, I everybody said you can't take Flacco. I like Buffalo this week. I think Buffalo. I, I think Buffalo. I'm going to go on the Josh Allen trade, and I like. I'll take the Broncos and the points in Los Angeles. I think both those are good plays. Buffalo and the Broncos. The bees. You're the best. Thanks, guys. Had a blast, ladies and gentlemen. Paisano. Enjoy Foxborough, Pat. I Enjoy will. it. I will. It's way out there. You know, way out there. It's way out there. Can't wait to experience this Army Navy atmosphere and vibe. And if I get to shake old Bill Belichick's hand in the uh, whole thing, oh yeah, that'd be quite a nice little treat. Yeah, nice little football weekend. I appreciate you, pal, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lombardi. Yeah. Yeah. Bravo. Bravo.